go. I'm back with another edition of how to reef on the cheap and whatnot. So come with me and I'm going to show you how to do an auto top off and not spend $100. You ready? Cool. This is my auto top off. I went on eBay to get this. I looked up auto top off, and that's where I found my first problem. If you look up ATO and auto top off, it generally take you to the aquarium section to show you ball float valves, and sometimes they have colors and whatnot. When they come, have mound brackets, and they. Uh, Costs around twenty-eight to thirty dollars. This cost two dollars and fifteen cents. I found it in the float valve category. I'll get a little closer. You can see it as a push line going to it. All that came with it. No line came with it. But the float valve and the nut and the washer and the fitting to have a push line put into it all came together. This is just a piece of PVC. Heat it up the piece of PVC. If you check out my video about uh, the Greensboro Science Center, in the very first few seconds, you'll see me crying and complaining about having to use the heat gun to make that. But it clamps on like a clip, it holds it perfect. I use the heat gun. You can get a heat gun from Harbor Freight for like $10. So, for you can have a tool. And the auto top off for less than you can pay for just the auto top off. You can get a new heat gun tool and use it for many things. And a heat gun can help you even in the reef community. Uh, you try to get hoses on something cold, you, you'll appreciate a heat gun. You can get your, your girlfriend's dryer at your own risk. And you can do that. You can heat it with a dryer and get a hose on. But in the case of this, you won't be able to use a blow dryer to melt PVC, flatten it between two boards and do all of this. This took a step drill, a heat gun, at least two days worth of thinking because I wasn't sure what I was going to do. But I'm satisfied with it. I've had it on there for about three weeks now. I've gone through about 10 gallons of water. Some of my trace element dosing is done through the water, through the uh, top off. So it's, it's, it's working for me. Uh, my clownfish, I have quarantined him. He has Popeye, which is bacterial. And I was going to give him a chance to get over, but I wanted him to get out of the main display tank while he did it. So. I may treat them with like uh, something that's antifungal to help them, but it looks like it's going down for now. So I'm going to just leave them alone. I'm just leave them alone. But uh, hopefully it'll be okay. I'm pretty sure that his, his uh, friend is, is missing him. Everything's going good. My algae's going good. I don't know if the chato's in there, but the algae's just growing on those egg crates and that is enough along with the tangs to hold it back. I'll move some corals a little. Move that one chalice over by another chalice. The caps are looking good. I need to clean my glass, but the caps are looking good. These snails are still out. Usually takes them about an hour or so to go in. They'll stay out until then. But that's an encrusting on the pour and encrusting type, and I guess I'll put all my zoas right here. And this guy is, is the new tank. I'm not sure if you can see his color. He has orange lines. I mean, orange uh, fin. It's an orange fin. Tamini? Tamani? Tamini? I'm not sure how you say that, but it's an orange fin of one of those. Uh, I think it's a bristle tooth tang. Uh, there was a little jockey and a little tail slap, but no one got their fin torn. 
just a little posturing. And then after that, they've been seeming to be cool. They, they, they're they like homies now. Uh, Majabo, PP8, I believe that's what it's called, it's still running. I'll, it's uh, from like one to eight. It is not a one to 10. It goes, the power level is eight and one being the lightest. And I have it somewhere on six. It is so powerful to be that tiny. Uh, my camera's not good enough for you to see little specks of debris floating. Oh, maybe it is. You see that one speck and it'll hit down and it'll come back around and jog it. So everything's working out. You'll see that it has a pulse pulsing to it. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, you can see it. This surface looking real clean. So everything's going good. I have no real complaints. Everything's going good. Uh, I'll show you this auto top off again, not the one in my tank. I ordered two. Oh, y'all upside down now. All right, here we go. I'll take it out this time. Oh, and again. Whew, boy. And again. Son, I'm gonna have to edit you out. Y'all gonna get sick. Oh my goodness. All right, we back. I gotta alter my selfie stick. But here it is up close. Just a ball valve. It has a screw. Loosen the screw, it has a mini T between that line. And yeah, it's very simple. One screw will let you change the angle of the elbow. And my push line is on the ground push line right here, so get these, I guess not, anyway, I should probably put you on the tripod, I'm not going to explain how to thread in the screw, it's real simple, you see it right there, so I have two of them, because it came on a long boat road from China, boat from China. I didn't know if it was going to really work so I got two just in case one was broken because it took forever to get here and you just you know thread that into this push the line in lock it in with that even though I didn't use it the lock part and you're done I erased all the lines that I had I put one line once it uh, leveled out I put the line there and it hasn't budged since then so it's doing the job and uh, it costs under three dollars so I, I would suggest you guys get that. And that's not the only thing I'm talking about. This is another thing I get for my backup plan. I live in North Carolina and we often lose power. And I'll have to use an inverter to run a heater and a bubbler. When I, well, a bubble machine. And the bubble machine will power that filter, not really for filtration, just to move the water around the heater. So when my power goes out, that's what I'll do to my tank off. Plug in a heater. I also got another heater. It's a, which is on right now. It's a eBay heater, right by my sterilizer. And I have the other one set to a slightly lower setting. So the one on the left does the brunt of the work. And if it ever breaks, I'm hoping that the other one could click on before it gets too cold in the water. You can see my, LED is still on. It stays on about an hour or so after. Cuts on about an hour or so before. So, yeah. That's what I heard a lot of people do and I'm experimenting with that. I'm no expert. I'll see how it goes. But for now, it's working good. I mean, if this is what my this is my tank dirty. See? I have green coralline algae, which is not the one I'm on. Some perp, got like this burgundy color purple, uh, coralline algae. Firefish coming out, not too skittish today. So everything, you know, everything's working out. I don't wanna make the video too long. I also have a filter. I'll take it off. You see how blue it got right there? Yeah. This filter did not come from Polyp Labs. I took a Dremel tool and walled it out the back to make it wider. It was just a single peephole and I made it wider. And it's a graduated orange, as you see. And I can use it to take away 
as much of the blue as I can. Cause my white, even my white cycle is pretty blue on this camera. To your eye, you be like, oh, that looks good. A little white in the blue, real bright, but it just not doesn't come out right on camera. So I have this and slide it down, and yeah, there you go. You can see the colors. So, uh, let me flip it around right quick. Uh, so, uh, like, share, subscribe. I'm going to let you go and get up out of here. I'm trying to waste too much of your time, you know. Just sitting here doing a little bit of maintenance with my fish. I'm out. Perfect.